New York Haiti project really started right after the earthquake in 2010. After the earthquake, I visited Port-au-Prince and was very traumatized by the images I saw and, and was asking God, how can I help the people of Haiti? And a wise friend told me to pray that prayer every day, asking God to show how I could help the people of Haiti. This was during my seminary days, and so for two summers in a row, I went to visit Haiti and uh, spent time in the village of Bondo. And they told me really about their lives and their needs. And they had a school where I prayed with the people and got to know them. And in fact, they used the school to worship. They used one of the classrooms as a church. And the number one thing that they said that they wanted was a church. And so over time, I kept going back, and we started working to build the church. The people of Bondo have the Episcopal Church as the center of their lives. It's where they have gatherings of all kinds, of meetings, and of course, worship. The church is where they play soccer. They have a field right next to the church. They regularly have tournaments there. And so when the people of Mattel, which is down the road from Bondo, saw the church in Bondo, they said, well, we need a church too. We need a place where we can worship. We were willing to help them, but we didn't want this to be just Americans going down there and giving, giving, giving. We asked them, well, what can you do? How can we help you to build up your own economy so you can support the, your own school, so we don't have to be the ones doing this only for you? So they came up with the idea of a grain mill. The grain mill is for the farmers to grind their own corn and grind their own millet. And so we received a grant from the Diocese of New York and from many parishes. And so we ended up building this grain mill and it's incredible and it's operational now and they're actually using it. And all the profits of the grain mill will go to support the school. And it also provides jobs for members of the community. So a family donated land, some beautiful land, and asked us to help them uh, start a school and to have a church. They were thirsty to have, mm. to have this school. Their involvement was very, very active. Well, we were all pretty amazed. We were expecting something with poles and a tarp, and here a whole building is being put up, you know, with timber framing and a tin roof and braces, diagonal braces. And everybody in town seems to be participating one way or the other. So while we were there this past summer, the time we had together, we worshiped. We had two nights of revival where we had incredible dancing and singing and worshiping and praying to God. And then on Sunday, we worshiped in the Episcopal tradition. In the Haitian culture, there is a word that we use, convict. This is when this community come and help this community. It was an incredible thing. So here's this church from Bondo that has a, a very traditional Episcopal style of worship, bringing all of their people, all, the, all of their lay leaders and choir and orchestra and priests, and they're thurible with the incense to worship in the middle of this uh, temporary structure that they had built with a dirt floor, but knowing that this is going to be the future location of the church. This is going where the permanent church and school is going to be. Yves Nell is the lay leader. He's leading the worship down there. And what we get out of it as Americans is the, the impression of, of what faith looks like when you have nothing else, when all you have is God. For people in this village in Mattel, it's really going day to day to day of how they're going to feed their kids and their family. But God is the source of everything, and that's why the church is so important to them. And that first Sunday when we worshiped with them in this past July, 150 people came. So now we have a school that's going to be opening in September in this temporary structure. In fact, they should have classes already starting. Teachers and blackboards and the students. We're breaking ground on the permanent school, too. So we're going to have the school open in a permanent structure coming very, very soon. education 
et, et c'est la minière, on commence avec le 7e, 8e, 9e, 10e, on arrive jusqu'à Philo, donc dernière classe secondaire. Je pense que c'est un rêve, moi, et le rêve que je continue toujours, c'est accompagner l'autre jeune qui n'est pas à l'école, qui n'a pas de possibilité. It feels so good to be here and surrounded by people who are so happy with what they have. And I mean, I'm really blessed to have this opportunity to actually experience that. Richesse, ce n'est pas matériel seulement. Richesse, c'est son mode de vie. C'est comme on lève, comme on mange, comme on pense, comme on réfléchit. C'est ça qui est richesse là. Donc moi-même, je suis riche. Je suis riche parce que je ne suis pas le corps. Mais je suis quelqu'un content tout le temps. Parce que moi, aider, si mon qui pibe pas seigneur. All of this is happening with partnership with parishes here in the United States. And so, what we want to do is spread the word about this incredible opportunity for a relationship. And it starts with us being friends together with the people of Bondo and the people of Mattel. And that relationship develops into something bigger and better as we help each other. Because Bondo is going to help Mattel the American community who come to, to help the Haitian community. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Merci. Oh, my God. Merci pour tout le Merci. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Come and be part of this wonderful work. Come and join in this tremendous partnership. Merci. Thank you.